How can I eat a healthy diet every single day? What does a healthy eating plan even entail? Well, if it's to best help your body perform both mentally and physically in an optimal way, well, forget about painstaking calorie counting. What does tracking macros even mean? Okay, tracking macros, this eating plan, well, involves tracking macronutrients, which are protein, fat, and carbohydrates. There are real benefits to eating like this since it can help ensure you, you consume enough each macronutrient for optimal health. Now, this type of tracking may still count calories, but it focuses more on the ratio of calories consumed from each macronutrient. It can help you eat healthier, but there are many diet plans out there still that use macro tracking along with the macronutrient restriction. Now, these types of diets may severely limit carbohydrates and or significantly increasing the fat intake. And although this type of eating may help some lose weight, it may not be appropriate for everyone. I'm here to help make the whole nutrition thing easier, all right? So tracking macros. Why is it that sometimes tracking macros are a little bit harder for some people and not for others? Well, some people might have digestive concerns like irritable bowel syndrome or things with their gallbladder or pancreas disease that won't tolerate a lot of the fat that it tells you to eat, right? So it might be harmful for some and put them at risk for heart disease and others will do just fine. So to make nutrition easiest to adopt and to adapt and to understand, here there are better tips to make sure that you are on track and you get to your goals in the best way possible. Number one, you want to eat mostly whole, unprocessed foods every day. This means that over half of the foods that you should eat uh, should be whole foods like fresh produce and whole grains and lean proteins, high quality proteins. Eating more whole foods are going to ensure that you receive a diverse array of nutrients like fiber and protein and antioxidants. Experts report that eating a diet full of whole foods can lengthen life, lower your risk of certain chronic conditions, and of course, boost your immune system in all. Include as many plant-based foods as possible in your diet. This is tip number two. Plant-based foods, super rich in fiber, and that is very beneficial for your uh, digestive and gut health. Many are also rich in a variety of antioxidants that help fight inflammation, fight immune boosting squashers, and it will reduce chronic disease like type two diabetes. Number three, consume enough nutrition to support your health. Sometimes restrictive diets, it's gonna leave you with cravings or feelings of deprivation, right? Not only that, uh, but without a diverse diet, you're at risk for nutritional deficiencies. That's gonna squash your immune system. These nutritional deficiencies are gonna lead to possible vision issues, fatigue, a decreased quality of life, among other things. Therefore, be sure to consume enough to satiate your body from a balanced diet to prevent any nutritional deficiencies. The fourth tip is to buy in bulk and freeze food for later. Even if it's just you or a few others at home, buy your foods either in bulk or frozen to save money. As for the produce, you can actually receive similar nutrient value as fresh with frozen produce. Although some produce should almost always be purchased fresh, uh, organic whenever possible, locally and in season. These include your dark leafy greens. The fifth one, meal timing. Now, there is not one surefire across the board way to eat healthy for everybody. It just really depends on your current health status, your nutrient needs, your activity level, and other factors. Therefore, one diet is not gonna work for everyone. Experts suggest that counting calories and tracking macronutrients is just part of the equation. And some research reports that the timing of your meals may also have a pretty large impact on your overall health. In fact, there was a 2019 study that looked at the potential impact of time-restricted feeding, also known as intermittent fasting, on metabolic health. Now, the study results show that this type of meal timing can actually reduce fat mass and increase 
uh, insulin sensitivity when fasting periods routinely extended more than 16 hours. And this type of meal timing restricts eating to a certain period of the day for several days a week. The other days of the week, you're supposed to eat a normal, healthy, balanced diet. So if you are thinking of planning out your meal times with intermittent fasting, that's something to know. You don't need an overly complicated ideas of numbers and percentages and ratios and fractions. Carry the one, move the 10 to the 100. You get what I'm saying. Just bring it back down to the basics and stick to the tips that I just provided you. Make a list and stick to the list when you're out shopping or purchasing your foods. Remember to eat as fresh, whole foods as possible, meaning unprocessed and plant-based as much as possible and mind your meal times and quality certainly does matter. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Try to see if you can incorporate some of these tips and start implementing them into your daily dietary routine. Be well everyone, this is Dr. Nancy. I'll see you next time.